If each century in history were a chapter in a book, what would each chapter be called? I guess the 18th century could be exploration, the 19th transformation, 20th revolution, and the 21st century could be. Today, advanced technology has improved our standard of living for sure compared to earlier times, but they nevertheless came with their own set of complications. Closer interdependence between countries and growing international relations have their ups indeed, but they also came with their own kind of downs. Even our public discourse, based on so-called logic and rationality, is starting to falter. You would reckon as humanity moved forward in an evolutionary process that we would solve more problems and come ever closer to being in that safe little bubble, right? But with problems in areas such as the environment, globalization, geopolitics, health, disease, culture and politics, our apparent advanced civilization with advanced tools and advanced ways of thinking and communicating is paradoxically walking more and more down the path of uncertainty. Attempts at certainty clearly left their own traces of uncertainty. So we can go back to my shrug and say that the key word that describes the 21st century could be uncertainty. Yes, in the present, we have more useful tools, but more scope sometimes means more confusion. Our modern times is the home ground for uncertainty. This is true not only on the bigger and abstract economic and political level, but also on all levels of society and basic everyday life. We live with and within uncertainty, so it's natural for things to feel as if everything's all foggy. From the moment we wake up to the moment we fall back asleep, we are faced with the task of having to make a series of choices throughout the day. It could be simple choices, such as deciding whether you want to take a walk in the morning or whether you want to go and make your bed in the morning. But some choices are harder to make and you have to take longer to weigh the costs, consequences and benefits before arriving at that conclusion. Some important decisions could take weeks, months or even years and the sole culprit behind this can ultimately come down to one thing and that is uncertainty. People are hesitant because they worry that their choices won't work out, that their decisions might be wrong and that they'll fail and regret later. In fact, this stream of consciousness is what I go through on a daily basis. I'll be like, okay, I've, I'm going to choose this over this. I'm going to do this. But then later I'll be like, but what if this choice isn't right? What if this choice leads to this bad consequence? And what if I was meant to choose this choice, but I didn't, and now I'm going to fail? And don't know, I'm going to regret later because everything is unclear and uncertain. People worry about the uncertainty of future consequences and what lays upon that road that they'll later face. But think about it this way, the person making that final decision is, in the end, going to be you. You're going to be the person that decides whether something happens or not. However big, bad, pressuring and stressful something may seem to be, and however blind, dumb and uncertain you may feel, you're the one in the saddle. So the solution to all this can only come from one source, and that source is you. It goes by many names, intuition, instinct, second sight, proprioception, the list could go on and on, but they all simply mean this, gut feeling. Do you have a gut? Look down and check if you feel like you're missing something. Although the word reads what it says, gut feeling doesn't literally mean gut feeling. Rather, it's more like a flash of insight from deep within, which generates faith. You and I and the people around us possess the sixth sense. Inside all of us, we have that ability to feel that hunch. This sense is a hugely underappreciated sense that we humans have, according to NIH's Intramural Research Program. We only get these sudden bursts of feelings from past experiences because from previous similar happenings, we can guess that another similar case would have similar results. Many studies in psychology also show that intuition is a very real process where the brain where, we, where the brain makes use of past experiences to make choice to, where the brain makes use of past experiences with internal signals and cues from the environment to help us make a decision. New research also suggests a link in the entric nervous system, or the ENS, which produces neurochemicals like dopamine and serotonin to memory and thinking skills. The ENS is so significant that many physicians refer to the gut as our second brain. So you can see there is a fair reason as to why we should start trusting our gut and ourselves a little more. 
Allowing our subconscious mind to take control could also be seen as having a positive mindset because this involves trusting ourselves and our control. To know that uncertainty is the only certainty and to embrace it. To face that uncertainty by doing what our gut feeling tells us to do with confidence in ourselves is how we should go about our days. The unknown future and the following consequences may seem scary and stressful, but it is exactly that the future is unknown that our capabilities are also. The future is unknown and so is our potential. Faced with a difficult decision to make, all you have to do is to just trust your shot. Whatever uncertainty you are faced with, just allow yourself to feel and act accordingly. It's yours to judge, so who's to say otherwise? Trust your gut feeling and your instincts and just go with the flow. It may seem cliche, but things don't become cliche without a reason. To navigate uncertainty, all you need is yourself and a little bit of faith. Got a gut feeling? Trust your shot and follow the power of your sixth sense. Thank you.